How everybody doing? This is Ed. Welcome back to the channel. And today, what I want to do is I want to show about adding in the Vive Mars Cam Track for your virtual set. And in here, what I'm using is the Aja, basically the Gen. Let me show you all some of that goodness. The Gen 10 HD SD Sync Generator and just the connections of how I'm doing that. If you've seen, I already showed y'all how we have this setup and we have things going on and we're running it to here, to our Blackmagic 6K Pro. If we see when I do our pen and left and right, we don't have no movement going on. Ain't nothing happening. So we wanna make sure that we get everything dialed in. So let's start talking about how I do that. Ultimately, first what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about the Vive Mars Cam Track. And the initial, this is not basically a tutorial on how to set up all of the Vive Mars. You should already have that down um, when it comes to it. You're going to make sure you far, first start off, you're going to hit your recenter. You're going to get your um, your tracker. You see I have a tracker on top as well as I have one over there in that corner. I have that on the floor because that's going to get you your ground setup. So I'll hit a recenter. I'll go through and number two is that. Bam, you do that. You hit ground setup. You go through the process. You're moving number two around. So you have that set up. So you want to make sure that you start off there. Then what I'm using is we have the Aja Gen, Gen 10. I'm going to see if I can show you all the backing of this. Give me a second. So I can show you all my setup. So that's how I got this thing set up and running. I don't think this camera going to get focused on it. You can see what I'm clicking in the back. And what that is basically doing is, it's basically setting this up to be able to gen lock. And I got it coming in at 24 frames a second. Reason why I got it gen lock at 24, because that's what I'm running in on my camera. Now, let's look over here. When it comes to the Vive Mars, we got a reference in. That reference in SDI cable, I'm basically just sending that to here, to this one. Right, so I'm sending that to this cable. Then I make a second cable. This cable, I'm basically feeding this cable right over into, let me see, I got my box here. Let's show y'all. I'm sending it over to, in the back of the Ultimate HD, to the reference in. So it's going to the ref in. I'm gonna connect that. Yeah, excuse me for the time. I'm trying to make sure I get this thing in there. So I have that connected up as a reference in. And that's because we're not using any type of, give me a second, we're not using any type of thing, but I'm basically running that in here. We'll see that kind of flicker a little bit because it's basically using it as a reference in. Now, so we're in Unreal Engine. If we click over to our live link, we go to our source, we go to message bus source. Now, let's say for instance, if you don't have live link up, sorry about that, let me show y'all how to put that in. You go to plugins, we're gonna type in live link. So you basically get the live link, live link camera. You can just copy the things that I got on here set up. So you're gonna check those. Those are gonna ask you to restart, you get them on there. All right, but like I said, I'm not trying to do a tutorial on how you start from scratch. I'm just showing you what you already should know and basically how to add to it so you can make these elements work. So now I go click on source. We go to message bus source. We have our Vive link. Now, since our Vive link is connected, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move this thing over into our Vive so we can see there. So now I have the Vive set up here. So now what that means is, um, our vibe should be pretty much set up in there. If we click on, let me go to my details. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna find our camera. These are what you're gonna pretty much add in. So basically how you add those in, you go to click add. I'm gonna type in lens. You'll see lens there. I'm not adding, I already have it in there. I'm just gonna show you what I plugged in. And then you're gonna add in live link. And you have your live link right there, controller. Bam, you want to click on that. That's how you add those two in. Now let's go through our lens. Now, if you see on here in our lens file, this is after you calibrated your Vive Mars, you can be able to import. Let me go to here. 
five lens calibration. You see, I got a bunch of them because I've been going through, right? There's a lot of practice at the same time I'm using both cameras. So you're going to go through the whole calibration process. Um, Vive shows how to do that, so I'm not going to try to talk about how you basically do calibrate your lens, but you're going to calibrate your lens. You're going to bring that file in here. This is under lens. What you're also going to do is you're going to go to distortion and you're going to have lens file and you're going to apply distortion. You're going to basically plug that in. That's all you need to do here. And then you are all set for this. And that. All right. Now you're going to go through the live link component controller. You want to make sure that as far as the live link go, that you're connected to the um, rover that's basically the tracker that's connected to your camera. I have mine on Rover 1. So you got that. Let me scroll back down. And then as you scroll down, you're going to see in camera roll, if you keep looking down to lens file picker, you want to also make sure I got the 6K Pro with the 24 uh, millimeter lens on there. And you're going to basically put that file, that lens calibrated thing there. Once you have that on, you are all set. And let me show you what I mean by all set. If I, this is me, I'm going to pan this camera a little bit. We're going to see the background move with it, right? So our background is moving. So it's a few things and steps that you want to do to make sure, because you see how this is off. You see the background moving, but the signal or something is not, it's not connecting, right? It seems like it's not fully gen locked or it's a frame delay and that's what it really is. So let's go, I'm gonna show you inside here how you're gonna basically dial it in. So in here, what I normally do is first, we wanna show our frames per second. If you see, I have these right there, I got it set to 24 frames a second. What you wanna do is in here, you wanna type frame so free frame rate right so we're going to type frame rate if you see frame rate under here you want to use fixed frame rate make sure that that's checked and put down what your camera is so i got 24 frames a second in there so that's what you're going to do there that's all you need to worry about Let's go back in here. So now we know that this should be set to a fixed frame rate. I already showed y'all how to be able to make sure that you're hitting play. So you get your elements to start going and we see our frame rate is still dialed in. If we look at our top screen, our output, we see that when I pan, we're off, right? We see that. We wanna be able to dial those things in. So this right here, if you open up your Ultimate software controller or control. And now we're in here. If we take a look at our settings and we go to inputs, we have this thing called frame delay. All right, that's the foreground input. What it's doing is it's basically giving a delay because you have your signal that's coming in from your camera that's going to ultimate. You also have the gen lock, basically the information that's coming from your Vive Mars cam track that's going through the Aja and sitting there. So you have all of these different ones. So you're going to have to start delaying the virtual camera in Unreal Engine. Could be a little delay off. So to dial those things in, what you have is, is your frame delay foreground input. So I'm going to put this thing at two. If I put it at two, now we're going to see it kind of dial in. You see how we're getting there, right? We're getting there. And let's change it up to three so you can do a little bit of, we got it at three right now. It usually take about 15 seconds to try to go through, but we're just, see how it's, total, it's getting there, we're working. And let's move this thing to four. We're gonna see it slowly start to lock in. That's getting better. Let's move it to five. Oh, look at that. That bad boy is looking good right there. So these are some ways that you can start to dial in to make sure that your virtual camera, when you pan, and basically that's what I've been doing. I'm just panning it. 
when you pan that it looks a lot more. Now, there's other things that you can do to help with dialing things in. If we look at our gen, not gen, we look at our Vive Mars. If I click on the settings and we go to our noise reduction settings, and we got station, tracking, stationary tolerance, and motion filter. When you click on those, you can actually do adjustments there. So I turn those off, and that usually helps with it. So motion filter, I can turn that off as well. These things help with when it comes to how you're trying to really dial things in. So you can have that, or you can turn them on and be able to do some adjustments there as well. Another step that you can take... Let me take this thing off here, so stop playing. Another thing you can do is if you click in your live link, you can start adjusting your offset. This also will change up the basically the delay or um, when it comes to UCI says when evaluating time, time to read, basically buffering it. I look at it all as a delay. And so when you're trying to delay how things are going, this can help delay. And now to me, I think that as far as you want to have to start looking at your, you know, me on here, you want to make sure like this is, like I said, it's a tutorial. I'm doing this, so I don't have it really fully dialed in. But ultimately, you got to make sure that as far as your virtual camera is in the correct position when it comes to where it should be placed on the ground, as well as uh, the distance. And these things should lock in when you're putting your lens calibration in. But you never know, and you might get a little bit of um, you might get a little bit of uh, delay, and those things you're gonna have to crease out. But you know what I mean, from that. You can have everything dialed in. You can see your frames. Um, if the file is too heavy, meaning that you got a large, a lot of stuff going on, that could slow your frame rate down as far as then that's going to show a delay in um, your final output. And these are things that I'm doing as far as when you're dialing things in. So like I said, sorry this is so long, but I really wanted to show y'all as far as getting things set up. If you see, like, even how I got it right now with the virtual set, you can have, you probably ain't going to even see me because I'm far, but, hey, I'm on there as well. If you're running it to a monitor, like how I got my Sumo 19, well, you can start recording and you can have that output. But it's definitely a good way when it comes to your virtual set. And I just wanted to give you all that info of how you can really start dialing things in to make sure your virtual productions are run smoother and be able to make things happen. So other than that, I'm going to let y'all do y'all thing. Get out there, keep creating, and I'll talk to you later.